Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm back with Peter. And as you can see by the title, we're gonna be talking about finance and dating. When I was dating, it was something that made me feel really uncomfortable, especially going on first dates or like in the beginning when you're just starting to date and just trying to figure out like, you kind of play that dance of like, who's gonna pay? Should I just pay for mine? Or like, do I let him pay? What if he doesn't offer? Um, just all these thoughts. And so Peter is actually really good with his money. And so I wanted to bring him on and ask a few questions. Yeah, why don't we actually start with who should pay first? Okay. I feel like that's like a really good start. Okay. Obviously, I don't represent all the guys, but um, this would be my perspective. I just feel that uh, it would be a nice gesture for guys to pay uh, or at least offer to pay. Um, at the same time, I also feel that it's a nice gesture for girls to offer to pay. And I think you have some thoughts on that as well, like the offering part. Obviously, if when it was like the first day, it was always really nice when the guy offered to pay. But I never went into um, like a date expecting to be paid for. And I think I think that's kind of an important attitude to have because, you know, I know some girls say like, well, we take longer to get ready. We are making like that kind of a, an investment. But honestly, I mean... I feel like when you get ready, you're kind of just getting ready for yourself so that you could feel good about yourself, right? The guy didn't ask you to use like that really expensive cream or anything. So um, yeah, I just always went into, you know, the dates Dude, willing like, to pay for like my perfect. portion at least. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So just let, let's get super practical here. Like you're eating and then the person comes up with a check and usually the, the waitress or waiter they usually give it to the guys, yeah, right? Yeah. And so I just, I think the guys ultimately should pay and there should be a little bit of like fighting. But I do feel like as a guy, it feels really good when the girls offer offers to pay. Like, oh, I, I can pay for this one. Um, if the guy's like, okay, that's probably not a good indicator to be honest. But uh, if he's like, no, 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 let me pay. I would say let him pay. Yeah. And I also, yeah. the reason why I never expected the guy to pay is because I never want somebody else, like whether it's a guy or a friend or whoever, to feel like I'm like, yeah. like, a, like expecting or trying to take advantage of them. You know, right. like that's right. never a good feeling. Like I, I wouldn't feel good about that. And so yeah. I always try to avoid that and by offering to pay for my portion. Yeah. And there was a time, uh, it was actually one of our first dates where Rebecca paid uh, for her side. And I really wanted to pay, to be honest. But that gesture to me, uh, actually, it meant a lot to me. It kind of um, communicated that, hey, I'm not entitled uh, to getting everything paid for. So I would say that would be our perspective and our answer to that who should pay on the first day and anyways okay so we have some questions prepared so the first one is is money important in dating and why do you think it's important to discuss so i feel that money is important and i feel like there's a stigma around girls um, being considered gold diggers for caring about money and i think that's wrong quite honestly now if you're a person who just loves money and only wants a person for their riches then yeah, you're wrong. I, I I don't feel like that's healthy. And I don't know, I, I can't judge everyone's lifestyle. But what I feel like is that money reveals a lot about somebody's character. Of course, it's not going to be like, you know, the end all be all about, you know, what it says about someone's character. But I think it reveals a lot, right? You know, you know, a tree by its fruits and whatever the character is, character will result in, you know, them making choices. And then choices, obviously, uh, uh, result in results that makes sense and so I do feel like it's important so it's not really about riches it's not really about like how much money does this person have it's it's about their character which is the most important and then how is their financial responsibility uh, but before I move on I mean do you have any other comments yeah and I know he just talked about like girls but I mean the guys being financially responsible but like us as like their partner or whoever's partner we need to also be financially responsible instead of just expecting just like the guy or our partner to be the one to kind of take care of us. Yeah, definitely not just, it's not just on the guys. I think it's on the girls as well. It'll say a lot about you as well. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it definitely applies to both. Um, but you guys all know that you know finance finances are one of the leading causes. It really is one of the biggest causes of divorce. And we all know the statistics statistics around divorce. I think everybody knows it. It really is a big issue. I'm not saying love money because you know, as a Christian, I, I don't believe in loving money. And I don't, you and I both know, I don't love money. Uh, but I do know that uh, it's a, an important topic. And it really does reveal things about character. And also, it will reveal a lot about how life will be uh, within a more serious relationship like a marriage. So, oh, and, and then the last thing I'll say is, uh, you know, it's better to be proactive than to be reactive. It's better to have these discussions early than rather than you know get into a committed relationship and then react to um, the financial stresses of this world, which will 101% come to you. Right. And also, if you wait too long, then you'll just become really attached to that person. And it'll just like whether even if your financial values do not align, it will be very hard to break it off with them. So then the question is, when should you bring up money on, when should you bring up money in a relationship? What, what do you think? Well, I think it's a conversation you should like have ongoingly, right? Um, so maybe not on the first date because that is a lot. But um, once you kind of realize, oh, like I really like this person and I could see myself getting more serious with them, I feel like it is something that you could bring up just like, Hey, like what are your thoughts around money and finance? Like what are your financial goals? What are you doing to like achieve those goals and also share with, share with them like your perspective as well. Um, I think that it's important because to do that because um, it'll, it'll just kind of help you to see if you're like financially aligned. Um, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, some things that I would personally bring up uh, when it comes to money. So like the question is, okay, when do you have this topic? Sounds like it's more when you are a little bit more serious, right? It's like in the, in, initially you just want to, you want to make sure you have that chemistry. It goes with the chemistry, the attraction. And then if you seriously look at this partner as like a you know potential long-term partner, then you want to start having these more serious conversations. Uh, and then the question is like, what kind of questions should you ask? And you touched on some of them. Uh, I think you should ask some of these things. I think these are very important. How much debt do you have? That's a really important thing because debt doesn't just go away. These things don't magically go away. Debt stays with you until you pay them off. And so that will 100% affect your lifestyle, affect your, you know, how you raise are you're able to raise your kids or give your kids a certain lifestyle right um do you budget what's your plan to pay off the debt uh, do you want to buy a home do you guys want to be homeowners together you have to plan for that right do you even want kids because if you don't want kids that may change things a little bit um then what's your plan to increase your income what's your current job and then what's your plans to increase that um and then do you want to be a, a stay at, like, is there an expectation of being a stay at home partner? Let's say I, as a man, want to be a stay at home partner and let you, you know, be the breadwinner. It's okay, right? It's, it's, it could be vice versa or whatever, right? Um, what are your financial priorities, right? Do you care more about vacations or do you care more about having a nicer home? Because, you know, with our limited incomes and with how, uh, you know, high inflation is, like, we have to choose one or the other, right? So... What do you think? And I think these are questions that I've like never thought about when I was like, you know, like really young and, you know, dating. But as you get older, I think it's actually a very good and healthy conversation to have. And obviously with somebody that you feel safe with, where you feel like they're not going to like judge you. If you bring up the topic and your partner is defensive about it, right. is avoidant about the conversation, I feel like, you know, that is a red flag because you just don't know. Maybe they're hiding something, but also more importantly, it just kind of shows that they're not maybe mature enough or willing enough to have difficult conversations because it is a very uncomfortable, kind of touchy, sensitive, and often sometimes embarrassing conversation to have, right? Like if you are in a lot of debt and you feel ashamed about that, or but even though it's like fairly normal to have debt, or like, you know, you don't have enough in your savings. It could be embarrassing or feel like there could be like shame and stigma attached to it. But 
Um, If your partner is able to listen to you without judgment and just kind of have that adult conversation, I think it's going to say a lot about that other person and also the potential success that could come from that kind of like healthy dynamic. Yeah. And I, I think defensiveness is actually, it's one of, uh, one of the four horsemen. Uh, I don't know if you guys know John Gottman. He's like one of the gurus, uh, d- data scientists around marriages. And, you know, he talks about how defensiveness is one of the four horsemen that, uh, one of the leading causes of divorce. And so that could actually be a red flag if they're super defensive about it. Kind of like Izzy from love is blind. We're super into dating shows, but Izzy was actually one of those examples and uh it also you know keep in mind everybody has their own lifestyle so again like the person may be super financially responsible to be honest but there may be certain circumstances like if you're in school and your i mean your income level will increase but you're in school right now uh and you're financially responsible but you know you just aren't making the income because you're in school you know that's totally fine right it's like there it doesn't mean that just because you don't have money doesn't mean you're you know not financially responsible it's more like let's figure this out together let's figure out like why are we in this place why do you have this debt and this debt is it because you're financially irresponsible or is it because you know you just had to do this to you know obviously you know survive while you're you know get going to get a higher income job or something like that right and so, so. like just like they're attitude and willingness to work with you, um, you know, work with one another on this topic and issue because everybody's circumstances is different, like Peter said. And so everybody's plans, every couple's plan will be different, right? And it's really not about if you have like a lot or a little, but like, what are we doing with the little that we have? What can we do with the little that we have or right? Or what can we do with the lot that we have? Um, Peter has a list of, um, things that, you know, money says about a person, like someone who's financially responsible. And do you want to share that? Yeah. I, uh, again, it's not about being rich, right? It's not about like how much money you have. And not about going for people that are rich or yeah. like have a lot of money. It, it, because honestly, uh, some people who are like rich are still broke. Like it doesn't matter how you can make a million dollars a year and still be broke. I've seen it. Like what I've learned about money uh, over time. And I, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm actually a financial coach. Um, I don't get paid for any of this. It's just, I have a passion for this, uh, but you know, it, you can make a lot of money and still be broke. And that's just what happens. I think what is more important is, you know, how does finances reveal things about, you know, one's character. And so some things that I wrote down was like, it shows how disciplined one is, right? You can make all this money and then you could be spending that same amount of money. Do they have delayed gratification, which is important in marriage? Are they organized? Again, you know, marriage, there's a lot of business aspects to marriage. And, you know, I run a few businesses. And so uh, I understand, I actually see a lot of similarities where you have to actually run your marriage like a business in order to have a happy and smooth marriage. Do they plan for the future? Do they invest? Will they provide for the family? And, you know, that's an important thing to have that security, right? Are they responsible? Um, do they have good boundaries, right? So like, do they stick with good bound- their boundaries? So if you have a budget, we have an X amount to go on vacations. And then when you go on that vacation, rather than spending nine times the amount that you plan to spend, do you stick to those? And, and that's important in marriage, right? Uh, it even reveals things about like, are you generous? We plan our generosity. Actually, we have a separate bank account for our generosity. We put a certain percentage I don't even think about it. It's all automated. I put a certain percentage of my income into a generous account. uh, And you could see exactly how much generosity, you know, um, we indulge in, right? Um, And then do they pay back debts, right? Um, I think that's really important. It says a lot about your integrity. Are you a person who, you know, pays back uh, what you owe to another person because, you know, that because we're supposed to, right? That That's actually a normal thing, even though in America we're so okay with being in perpetual debt or de- we're so easy to like declare bankruptcy. But that's actually not a, a thing of integrity to not pay debts. So, yeah. So I, I would say that there's a lot of things that money actually does reveal. Uh, again, I don't want to make it seem like it's like a 100% indicator because there could be a reason like 
my mom could be in the hospital and I had to pay for her medical bills. Like I'm financially responsible, but I had to pay for my mom's medical bills. Right. So, um, but honestly, like I said, you know, a tree by its fruits, it does reveal some things and it, it, it gives clues, I would say. So I think it's important. So there's like a lot more that we could touch up on, but we didn't want this video to get like so long. So, um, is there anything else that you want to touch up on? Yeah, I, I would say guys, um, just letting you know, I, I started budgeting. I, I had a very bad financial circumstance where I, I was so broke. Um, I, I'll probably explain that in a different video, but I've learned to uh, be financially responsible through brimstone and fire. And so I started budgeting when I was um, way before I got married. Uh, and let me tell you, I am experiencing so many benefits of having budgeted and learning budget. It's not easy, right? Like it's not easy to budget, but having learned that skill over several years and then coming into marriage with that skill, I feel like is one of the, again, like the thing is when you're in emotional, when you're in financial distress, like you wonder why your marriage is like, you're always fighting all the time. When you're in financial distress, you have insecurity for girls and girls more than guys probably. But when you have the insecurity, uh, you don't, the best side of you doesn't come out. Actually, the, one of the worst sides of you come up. So if you're wondering why it's like, okay, out in the surface, you're fighting a lot and there's a lot of marriage problems. Well, look behind the scenes, look at the core. It's probably a lot of it actually has to do with finances, right? And so for me to have prepared that, you know, boundaries and budgeting, um, really helped with our, you know, the smoothness and the, you know, the, the, the joy of being married. And so what I would encourage you guys uh, very strongly is to budget. You know, if you fail the plan, you plan to fail. And so please guys, I would encourage you, if you're single, please learn how to budget now. It's gonna be hard, but I 100% believe if you want to have a better marriage, this will improve your marriage and you gotta start now. Yes. So yeah, thanks for watching this video. And if you guys want uh, more videos on finance uh, in general or finance and dating, just let us know in the comments. Uh, Peter is really passionate about this topic and very knowledgeable about, knowledgeable about it. And so, um, yeah, we may come back on and talk about it again. So anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you guys yeah. next time. Bye. See you guys. Bye.